when it comes to Discord bots, there's a lot of different options when it comes to creating and handling commands in an efficient way. I've covered multiple different strategies throughout this series alone, and based off of my own experience and the feedback of you guys, I've decided to create my own NPM package, and the goal of this package is to try and be the most efficient and user-friendly command handler that you can find. So throughout this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the features and the pros and cons of this command handler, as well as a step-by-step -step guide on how to install and use this command handler with either your existing Discord bots or new Discord bots that you'll be creating in the future. A link to the documentation for this package can be found at the top of the description. However, before we dive into that, let's go over to VS Code and let's take a look at this basic project we have set up. We're essentially just importing Discord.js. We're then requiring .env to use our actual token within our .env file. And then we're simply just console logging whenever the bot is ready. If you have a slightly different setup or if you have an existing bot, that's fine. However, I'm going to be demonstrating this just in case you are using a brand new bot. But the setup process is very similar when it comes to an existing bot that you might already have. Now that we see what we're working with, let's go over to the documentation for the one-off keys commands package. And this package is called WOK commands, WOK standing for worn off keys. And as you can see here, this package is still under development. Not all features are done yet. I will be adding a lot more features to this over time. And if you have any feature requests or bug reports, feel free to leave them down below in the comments, or you can post them in the worn off keys discord server. And I'll be using those suggestions to try and improve this package over time. But let's start off with the current features. Once you're here, you can scroll down to installation and we can install this like most other packages by simply typing in npm install wok commands. So you can copy this, however, I'm just going to navigate into my terminal and I'm going to type it out. npm install wok commands and press enter. So this is uninstalling. I can then use control L to clear my console. And under the setup stage, we see we have a very basic project, which is very similar to the one we have within VS Code here. The only difference is that within this example, we are importing one off keys commands and then initializing it by just simply creating a new instance of the class and passing in the client as an argument. Let's go ahead and do that within VS Code. Now that we've installed it, we can simply import it. const one off keys commands equals require one off keys commands. And then after our console log, I'm going to say new one off keys commands and pass in the client. We can then save this. And I'm going to run this using something called NodeMon, which is basically just going to listen for changes in our source code and automatically restart a bot whenever a change occurs. If you don't have access to NodeMon, you can install it really easily with npm install nodemon-g. However, I already have access to it, so I'll cancel this. And then I'm going to run my bot using NodeMon with just simply typing in NodeMon. And immediately here, we run into this error. Here we have a console log saying no commands folder specified using commands, which is the default. So if you don't specify a folder name for where commands are going to exist, it will default to the commands folder, which currently doesn't exist. And so it throws an error. We can simply fix this by making a new folder called commands. And while this is the default name that it mentions right here, we can actually specify whatever folder name we want as the second argument by just typing it in. For example, I'm going to name this commands. And again, even though this is the default, it will then specifically look for that folder. Now that I save this, if we scroll down, we see that the server automatically restarted thanks to NodeMon. Then it's going to say no MongoDB connection URI provided. Some features might not work. And one thing to keep in mind with this is that there is MongoDB support automatically built in. The only thing you have to do is pass in your standard MongoDB connection string, and it will actually create a single MongoDB connection that you can use throughout your entire bot. So if you're already creating a MongoDB connection, you won't have to do that anymore. You can let one off keys commands handle that for you. So at this stage, let's go back to the documentation and let's take a look at what else we have here. Rolling down, we see an example of how to set our Mongo path. We'll come back to this once we are going to explore the features that require MongoDB. We can scroll down further and we see something called creating a feature. If you've been following the current series, that means that you're familiar with the concept of features, which is essentially going to be a simple file that just has some different listeners in it or other utility functions that are going to make up one complete feature of your bot. So automatically, this provides functionality for that. Let's go back into VS Code, and inside the main directory, I'm going to make another folder called Features, and we can actually specify this as the next argument. So I'm just going to use Features. I can then save this. Nodemon automatically restarts this. And at this point, it's going to automatically load all of the files within our Features folder and automatically invoke the exported function. 
So with that said, I can make a new file in here. And as a very basic example, let's assume that we want to console log every message that is sent within the actual Discord servers. So I can then say message logger.js. Of course, this name can be whatever you want. And then within here, we have to export a function. So module that exports is going to be a function. And this function is only going to have one requirement, and that is going to be that there is a parameter, which is going to be the actual client. So at this stage, we then have the ability to create different message listeners. For example, we can say client.onMessage. This is going to have a callback with a message parameter. And within here, if our goal is to simply just console log the content of that message, we can do that with console log message.content. I can then save this. It automatically restarts. And we see right here, one of these commands loaded one listener. So as you add more commands and more listeners, it will automatically tell you how many of them it loaded whenever your bot starts up. Navigating into Discord, we see the tutorial bot is online. I can go ahead and type in test within here, and we then see test within the console. I can say hello world, and we then see hello world in the console. This is due to the listener that is automatically being imported and ran right here. You can even have subfolders. So for example, I'll just say test, and I'm going to add in test.js. Within here, I'm just going to simply just do a demonstration, so I'll move a little faster. So I can just say client.on message. And then within here, instead of console logging the actual message content, I'm just going to console log test. Now, if I save this, it's then going to say loaded two listeners. I can then go back into Discord and I can say hello. And it's going to console log hello and then also console log test. So you can have nested folders or nested directories in order to organize your code even further. I'm going to go ahead and delete these just so we don't see a bunch of different console logs. Now, at this stage, let's go back to the documentation and see what else we have. Here we see creating a command. And most of the functionality for this NPM package will be focusing on commands. And if you've been following this series, you might be using my advanced command handler. My goal is to make all the previous commands you already have automatically work with this new command handler. So with that said, let's continue on here. Here we're going to export an object very similar to the advanced command handler you might see within the series. We can then pass in a number of different things. If you scroll down further, we see more examples. We can pass in the name, which is going to be a single string. We can pass in commands, which can either be a single string or an array. When also we can pass in aliases, which will be an array or a single string. These are basically all interchangeable. Also keep in mind that the name of the file will automatically be used as a possible command. So if you didn't include any name, commands, or aliases, but you named your file ping.js, the ping command will still run this. Let's take a quick look at that. Let's go back into our commands folder. Let's make a new file called ping.js. We're going to export an object. So module.exports equals this. And I'm not going to include anything aside from a simple callback. So the callback is going to be a function. We'll look more at the possible arguments you might have here, as well as the different names you can use in a few moments. But first, let's focus on making sure what this command actually works. So we're, let's assume that we only want a message parameter here. I can then say message.reply on. And I can save this, and it's going to automatically restart. It's then going to say loaded one command. Going back into Discord, I can then run x message point ping, and it's going to work right there. Even though we did not specify the actual commands or aliases or name, because it's going to automatically assume that the name of the command is ping, as well as everything else. We could say aliases. Let's say that we have just p. I can then save this. Going back, I can run x message point p. It's going to automatically work. So again, going back to the documentation, name, commands, and aliases are essentially all interchangeable. And next, let's take a look at the callback function. This can actually be named a few different things. Callback function can be named run or execute. So whatever you prefer out of those three, you can use. And there's going to be a number of different possible options here when it comes to arguments. The first one is the message. The second one is the args as an array. The third one is the text. So essentially the array joined together. And keep in mind that the args and the text will not include the prefix or the actual command. Those are automatically removed for you. Next up, we're going to have access to the client, just in case you need that for whatever reason. And then the prefix, which is going to be either the global prefix or the prefix for that specific guild, because this package does have built-in per server prefixes, assuming that you do provide MongoDB support. And lastly, we do have an instance of the Warnoff Keys class, which will have some helper functions within it. So next up, let's scroll down. Here we see argument rules. 
Similar to my advanced command handler, you can specify the minimum and maximum number of arguments as well as certain error messages. However, you can customize this version a lot more. So for example, we have our standard minimum and maximum arguments. Before we continue on to the error messages, let's make sure we understand those concepts. So going into VS Code, I can get rid of aliases just because it's not necessary and it cleans up our code. I can say min args is zero and max args is zero. I can then save this and going into Discord, I can then exclamation point ping and it works as expected. The exclamation point ping test will then say incorrect usage. And this is the default message right here. If you're familiar with my advanced command handler, then you're aware that we can set per command error messages. And you can do that here as well. But you can also set a global default inside of the actual setup. So going back into our index file, I can then chain a function here. If I press dot, you see a few different helper functions. For example, set syntax error. I could then say incorrect usage. So this is going to have the same exact results. However, if I go back into the documentation and we scroll down to global syntax errors, we see that we can now use placeholders. So we can say prefix, command, and arguments. These have to be surrounded by curly braces and in all caps. These will not add in any spaces at all. So for example, the prefix and the command have no space in between them, but there is a space in between the command and the arguments. So you will have to add in your own. For example, if I go in and copy this, and I paste it inside of the actual syntax error, I can then save this. Then going back into Discord, I can exclamation point ping, and it's going to work, but exclamation point ping test is then going to say incorrect syntax, please use exclamation point ping. And if I configured the prefix for the server to be question mark, it would then see question mark ping and we'll demo that here in a few minutes. But how do you specify the actual arguments afterwards? Well, going back, we can see expected args similar to the advanced command handler. So I can simply copy this. We can paste it inside of the actual command here. Now if I save this and I go back and I run exclamation point ping test, it's then going to say incorrect syntax, please use exclamation point ping, and then the target user's at. Of course, this doesn't make sense because we have a maximum of zero max arguments, but this is just an example. Going back, similar to the advanced command handler, you can set negative one for an unlimited maximum number of arguments. So for example, if you want between two and unlimited arguments, you can do this. So now you have at least two, but you have no limit on the maximum. You can also specify a syntax for this exact command. So you can set a default syntax just like here, Let's say you want to override this. Let's copy this and let's say specifically for ping, we want to override this. We could say syntax error, and then let's say bad syntax. Let's save this. This will automatically restart. I can then say exclamation point ping, and it's going to say bad syntax here. So with this, you can add in per command error messages, and this will always override the global error messages when it comes to the specific command only. So let's go back to the documentation. We can then scroll down and we see per server command prefixes. So this says this feature requires a MongoDB connection to be present. So before we dive into this, let's scroll up to the setup stage and we can actually look into how to do that. So scrolling down, we then see set MongoDB path and we have to pass in a string. So going to our index file, we can do that. All of these functions can be chained together. Now after set syntax error, I can then say set Mongo path. I can then pass in process.env dot mongo uri and that's because my mongo connection path is located inside of my dot env file of course if yours is imported differently then go ahead and import it the correct way i can then save that and beforehand we saw no mongodb connection uri provided but now we no longer see that going back into discord i can then run exclamation point prefix i can then say exclamation point prefix question mark and it's then going to set the prefix to a question mark now if i do exclamation point prefix Nothing happens because exclamation point is no longer the prefix. If I do question mark prefix, now it works. Also, if I do question mark ping, it'll then say bad syntax, please use question mark ping, the target user's at. And if someone tried this in a different Discord server with this bot, it would then say exclamation point, unless it was specifically set to a different command prefix. So there's built-in per server prefixes, assuming you provide a MongoDB connection string. Going back to the documentation, we can scroll back down. We also have built-in support for enabling or disabling commands. Currently, there is a command to simply list all the commands. This is kind of like a help feature. However, you might want to include your own more detailed help feature because as of now, this isn't very advanced. If I run question mark commands, you'll see what I mean. It's obviously very basic. This will be improved in the future, but I'm just trying to get this package out as quickly as possible. And I'm assuming that most of you have a custom help command anyway. 
With this stage, we see enabled on all of these. So I can then say exclamation point command without the S, and then disable, and then ping. Then if I do exclamation point commands, we now see enabled is no. And if I do question mark ping, it's then going to say that command is currently disabled in the server. And of course, in other Discord servers using your bot, that will not be the case unless they also disabled it. I can then say exclamation point command enable ping, and then it will automatically enable it. I can then confirm this by running the ping command, and we get bad syntax so that command is actually working again. Going back to the documentation, we see required permissions. This is very similar to the advanced command handler. So let's say that we only want administrators to run this. We can then say required permissions is going to be an array of strings. For example, administrator. That way you have to have the administrator permission in order to use this. And of course, admins automatically can use this anyway, but this is mostly just to make it so other people who are not admins cannot use this. If I save this, we can then go back and I can run question mark ping and everything works because I'm an admin. Also, I'm going to change the prefix back real quick. So prefix exclamation point, because I'm more used to actually typing that. Going back into the documentation, we then see configurable required roles. And this is a feature that allows the server owners who are using your bot to configure what commands require what roles. In the previous advanced command handler that I made, you would have to specify a role name, and that's going to force every server that your bot is inside of to actually use this same exact role name, and that's not really efficient. Also, you had to have every single role that was specified there, and I had some complaints about that. So now the server owners will have complete control over what commands require what roles by either tagging the role, setting it to none to reset everything, or by providing the role ID string. Let's take a look at that. Going back in here, we see that I have no roles. However, there is a test role. I can then run exclamation point require role. And as you can see here, there are a number of different aliases to make sure that if you type required or roles or any combination that it will always work. The require role, we then want the actual name of the command. So let's say ping. And then we can specify what role we want. For example, at test. So it said add a role, whatever the ID is, to command ping. And then if I go to run this, even though I'm an administrator, it says you do not have any of the required roles to use this command. However, if I go in and I give myself the test role, I can then run ping and it works just fine. I can then remove my test role and I can say exclamation point require role ping none. It's then going to remove all of them from there. So I can then run the ping command, even though I don't have the test command anymore, or the test role rather. And currently, those are all the features within this NPM package. Of course, my goal is to be adding more features and improving this over time. And so depending on when you're watching this, you might want to take a detailed look at the table of contents at least, and also just the rest of the documentation, because some things could be improved or updated compared to what I'm recording right now. And like I previously mentioned, if you have any requests or bug reports, leave them down below in the comments or within the Warnoff Keys Discord server. I'll try and use all of those ideas to improve this to make it more user friendly for everyone. Thanks for watching this Discord JS tutorial. If you want to learn more about Discord JS, consider clicking on the playlist you see on your screen now. If you need help, feel free to leave a comment or ask in the Warnoff Keys Discord, which can be found in the video description.